Hey, what's up? Chanel, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog today. Thanks to Born for Burning Records, one of my favorite black metal releases of the year. The self titled EP or demo, I'm not really sure, by Void of Melancholy. This is fantastic. One man project, all music by PJ. Devastating nostalgia. I guess they're talking about the new Ghostbusters movie or the last three uh, Star Wars movies. Remember the Millennium Falcon? Remember Proton Packs? One with Frost and Winged Dream. You get some mystical sounding just black metal from Finland. Look familiar a little bit. Like, hands down, one of the best black metal releases of the year. Although it's only three songs, it just gets the fucking job done. Like, to me, this is what I want from, like, a straightforward black metal release. It's kind of like the style of black metal I prefer. But... It depends on my mood, to be honest with you, but like, yeah, I'm more, you know, like, some of my favorite black metal records this year, I mean, Spectral Wound, congratulations also to Holder for signing to 20 bucks spin, but like, this is from Finland, and it just... I don't know. It has that sound to where I feel like I, if like you listen to it enough, it's going to just start snowing outside. And that's a good thing. But like sometimes, you know, I listen to black metal that's barely audible. But then other times I want to listen to like, you know, like Volhan or like this bad boy. <laughs> I mean, come on, who doesn't want to listen to that? But, yeah, I mean, I'm extremely picky when it comes to black metal, but, like, there's certain bands and stuff that I really fucking like, especially modern shit like Pan American Native Front, Commodious, Valak. There's so many good black metal bands, but there's just something about Void of Melancholy and it's in the title it's legit like it has this vibe of melancholy and sadness and it's bone deep like the coldness of I want to say isolation because that's just the vibe I get like to me, devastating nostalgia is not bringing up Ghostbusters or Star Wars movies. Although, technically, you could say that. Because I don't want to even get into it. But you folks know how I feel about soft reboots and the whole remember remember this type. Uh, to me, it's fuck it fucks with your head. It makes you feel like you like something that you know under normal circumstances you wouldn't like to me devastating nostalgia could fall under that like but I'm pretty sure that's not what they're talking about here this, this has nothing to do with Hollywood it has everything to do with devastating nostalgia like thinking of memories that are hurtful and that like 
with an epic solo like that, you know, it gives it heart. And I said it before, and people have given me a lot of shit about this statement. Sometimes black metal is like the emo of like extreme music from like the more depressive side of black metal like you know Zatzer does Nort count? I don't know if Nort counts but like I remember for a, a long time people considered this stuff um depressive suicidal black metal like it was just USBM to me but I mean, call it what you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. But like, one with frost, one with nature, one with the cold. You're content with your environment. Again, I don't know if I'm right, because there's no lyrics, and... I really like that this should be interpreted the way that you feel it should be interpreted. Because there's some black metal where, you know, as much as I think it's fun to, you know, knock on JC, sometimes, you know, like, how many deicide songs can you write about killing or just hating Christianity? It's like, alright, you know, Vital Remains did, did de-Christianize. That was, to me, like, the ultimate epic, like, death metal record when it came to bashing old JC. But that was just in 2003. When DSI came back, though, with that Scars of the Crucifix record, they had Jack Owen on guitar after his failed country music stint. Because I think he quit Cannibal Corpse to play country and yeah, it just, it just didn't work out. So he went back to death metal. He was already replaced in Cannibal Corpse, to my knowledge. And, yeah. Ended up in Deicide. Hey, it's a paycheck. But, um... The last track on here, Winged Dream. To me, this is kind of what I consider at times, like, soaring black metal where it like kind of feels like you're being shot through a cannon like and just like some Aya Saron type shit but like over have you ever read a game oh see I don't want to I almost fucked up I almost fucked up and spoiled a book so I'm gonna shut the fuck up. It's a Song of Ice and Fire book. I almost really fucked something up right there. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what this reminds me of. Wing Dream. This could be about Bran Stark, for all I know. I'm not gonna say anymore because the book is different than the TV show. Hell, in the books, we're just to a certain point in the show where everything just went. <laughs> but in the books, so much gnarly shit's going on. If George R.R. R. Martin ever finishes, I think we're in for a fucking treat. But this is one of those releases that also completely caught me off guard. I had no idea it was going to be this good. And I'm glad it was. And, you know, very, very happy with this. 130 copies, Born for Burning, not the LA label, based out of Philly now, fucking A. And this is all recorded during the summer, and it doesn't sound like it, but I'm pretty sure in Finland, especially if you're in the mountains, you're still gonna get this weather. But I, I don't really know, because I, uh, I've never been to Scandinavia. It's on my to-do list. Sir, it is. Like, it's one of those places I've always just wanted to go to. But, um... 
when it comes to black metal, it's just, I know a lot of you want more black metal on this channel, but like, I'm really picky about it, and like a lot of the stuff I try to get, it's just, it sells out like that. It's like legit impossible to get my hands on it. Like, I forget how I even scored the Spectral Wound tape. Like, oh, Caligari had it, and I, I, I just got fucking lucky. And, uh... Because, like, otherwise, this is, like, a $22 brand new tape. And, you know, that's a lot of money for a brand new tape. But it's worth it. It really is. It's fucking worth it. Because I think Evil Greed might have done a reissue. But, like, still, that's European. You're dealing with all that shit. I don't know. But just, this is so good. And I'm sorry. I sp you know what? I'm, I'm turning it off. I did not mean to spoil this EP, but I hope... Okay, it is an EP, not a demo. Void of Melancholy, self-titled EP. Program repeats itself. This is just one of those black metal releases that... It makes you feel something. And any time a black metal release does that to me... Yeah, I make a big deal of it because it reminds me of the first time black metal was like, whoa, like there was this moment and I've had plenty of arguments. Is Dissections, the Somberlin, a black metal record or a melodic death metal record? It's black metal. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Again, you can argue amongst yourselves. But be nice. It's a black metal record. But there's this one part in the actual title track where, you know, it does this -na 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 -na, this beautiful silence. And like, I'm driving over this bridge into Philadelphia and there was this thunderstorm like off to the left and I remember, like, when that part came on, like, the hair stood up on my arm. And I was just, like, I got this feeling. And I was, like, whoa. Like, what was that? Like, and then I realized, I was, like, the music plus the atmosphere created this feeling of, like, not anxiety. It was, like, a more euphoric, like... I get it. And at the time, like, I was listening to tons of Bathory and, you know, like, more kind of primitive shit, like, I would say. Like, yeah, yeah, primitive would be the word, I guess. So, like, something a little bit more fleshed out, like dissection. Because I had also just started diving into the Emperor catalogs. Catalog, I'm sorry. So, you know, I was starting to get into a little bit more, like, synth-heavy, kind of melodic black metal, like Nemesis Davidia by Satyricon. That record, to me, like Mother North, again, I had one of those moments, like, Driving through the mountains in the outskirts of Pittsburgh during like a whiteout blizzard with uh like when that one really fucking epic part kicks in on Mother North. I think like, sometimes in the dead of night that part like kicked in during this like whiteout where we kinda had to like pull the car over and again like it just you could you could feel like the ener like the ener as corny as it sounds like I swear, you could feel like the energy of just the music, the environment, and I know that's all a mental thing. Like the music didn't magically change the weather. Like it just it was a coincidence, but 
it just added this like experience to the music that was unintentional. It was a part, it was just nature being nature. And it was fucking just one of those moments that I just kind of sat back and I remember my ex being like, this is sketchy. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, just, let's just chill for a bit. And like, we just sat on like the side of the car for a little bit and just listened to the rest of the album and then uh, finished the drive out. But like, to me, moments like that, they're few and far between. And, um, you know, there's certain death metal records that, to me, like, have songs like that and moments like that. Like, especially, you know, Morbid Angel's Altar of Madness. Like, you put any song on there, you're gonna put a smile on my face. Like, especially Chapel of Ghouls. Like, I fuck, like if you don't love Chapel of Ghouls, there's something wrong with you. And if you say, oh, that song's overrated. I love Lord of All Fevers and Plagues, but it's not on my vinyl version. I know it's like a bonus track on the CD, but it's not on my LP. It happens. But, I'll tell you what. If Born for Burning still has some copies of Finland's Void of Melancholy self-titled EP, go grab yourself one and enjoy it. Because it's magnificent. Winter is coming. And this is, you know, it's only three tracks. But, like, it gets the job done. It really does. You're, you know, you're in, you're out. And, like, I had time to ramble. I mean, yes, I did cut the last song short. Not to spoil it for you. But I did that on purpose. I don't want to spoil a release like this that I really feel a lot of you will re really, really fucking enjoy. Because it's just one of those black metal records that it's got some power to it. Like, just, and I can't, it's one of those things I can't put my finger on. Like, I think the last time I, f I felt like that was when I saw Demon C live. And it was just one of those again one of those experiences where it's just like you just kind of get it like you get everything that's going on and everything makes sense and it's awesome like there's just this feeling of enlightenment and like dude like, that was fucking cool and it's just to me it's hard to come by in a live setting like, black metal, I love it when it's vicious as fuck live. I've never really seen a chill, like, black metal band in a live setting. Yeah, I really never have. I'm sure it's, like, sick, but, like, yeah, I, I was just thinking about it. Like, I normally, if I'm going to a black metal show, there's, like, war metal bands opening, and then, like... Yeah, it's normally, like, fucking just savage as shit. But, like... Finland's Void of Melancholy. I mean... Like I said, these are... This is one of those black metal releases. Like... They don't come around... Too often to where... I'm, like, making a 20-minute video over a fucking three-song EP. I think it's that good. And... I'm going to stand by that. Void of Melancholy on um, Born for Burning. Out of Philadelphia now. But the band hails from Finland. Limited the 130 copies. If you could still get it, get this shit. You will not be disappointed. If you are disappointed, then you probably... Go listen to the new Antichrist Siege Machine or something gnarly like that. But, like, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Like, especially if you like, you know, that style of black metal to where, like, it reaches into your soul and makes you feel something. But 
As always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hails. Nice.